managing weeds can account for a significant amount of a farm's labor and resources. However, effective management of the weed seed bank can reduce those demands. The weed seed bank can be described as all the viable weed seeds that have accumulated in a soil profile. In this video, we will describe the germination method for identifying weed species and classifying a field's weed seed bank. The germination method consists primarily of four steps. The first step is to take representative soil core samples. The second step is to prepare the samples for germinating the weed seeds. The third step is to put the samples in an environment conducive for germination. And the last step is to identify the weeds in the samples. You'll need a few basic materials to carry out the germination method. A tool for taking soil cores, such as a bulb planter or bucket auger. A clean container for collecting the soil cores. Bags for transporting the samples. Labels or stakes to mark the samples a screen for sifting the soil cores, trays or flats with drainage holes for germinating the samples, a few pieces of landscape fabric or some other thin permeable material to line the trays, and vermiculite or some other sterile substance such as sand or perlite. The first step is to collect representative samples from a field. To obtain the most accurate results, Take samples during the late winter or early spring, which allows the weed seeds to be subjected to cold temperatures and vernalized. You can choose from several different sampling patterns. Systematic sampling patterns, such as diagonal or zigzag patterns, perform well when you are taking at least 15 to 20 samples. You can determine the number of soil core samples needed by considering a couple of different factors. For example, you'll need more soil cores to accurately calculate seed bank densities as the estimated seed bank population decreases and as your desired level of precision increases. A soil core should consist of a sample that is about 5 centimeters wide and 10 centimeters deep or 2 inches wide by 4 inches deep. After taking each soil core, place it in a container. Depending on the soil type and soil moisture, you may need a tool to force the core out. When taking soil cores, the purpose is to sample weed seeds in the soil, so be sure to include all the soil from the soil coring device, and clean all tools and materials before sampling other fields. After collecting all soil cores from the field, put them together in a bag with a label identifying where the sample was collected. Keep the sample cold until it can be processed to maintain the viability of the weed seeds in the sample. The second step in the germination method is to prepare a clean sample that has a crumbly or friable soil texture, ideal for root growth. To do that, put the soil cores through a fine screen with about a one quarter inch mesh size. That will break up any clods and remove any organic matter or debris. After sieving the soil cores, combine and thoroughly mix them together. This process creates a representative sample that is clean of debris and loose enough for weed seeds to easily germinate. The third step in the germination method is to create the best conditions for sprouting the weed seeds. Put a layer of vermiculite or another sterile substance on the bottom of the flat and then cover with landscape fabric. This allows for even watering and drainage and easy removal of the sample. You want as much surface area as possible to allow the weed seeds to germinate, so spread the soil out in a 1 inch layer in the flat. One 10 by 20 inch greenhouse flat will hold approximately 5 soil cores. Mark each flat with a stake identifying the sample. Then put the flat in the best growing environment available with optimal light and temperature control and keep the soil moist. Remove and identify weeds once they are at a stage where they are distinguishable. For broadleaf weeds, this would be once they have their first set of true leaves. Grasses are more complicated to identify and require some knowledge of their parts. You can distinguish between many grasses by their auricles or ear-like projections on the base of the leaf, 
by the ligules or strap-like projections at the plant base and the presence or absence of hairs on the leaves. There are several good resources for identifying weed seedlings, including books such as Weeds of the Northeast and Weeds of the South. Extension publications like Common Weed Seedlings of the North Central States and weed identification websites, such as the one hosted by the University of Missouri. If you can't identify a certain weed, remove it and transplant it to another container and grow it out to a more identifiable stage. Remove the weed seedlings frequently to prevent plant competition. Almost 70% of the weed seeds present in the sample will germinate in the first cycle. To prepare the sample for a second cycle, stop watering after five weeks and allow it to completely dry. Remove the sample from the flat and remix the soil. Redistribute it in a lined tray and complete another cycle, which will likely germinate another 10% of the weed seeds. After four to five cycles, almost all viable seeds will have emerged. The samples can then be used to classify the weed seed banks. A low weed seed bank has less than 100 germinable seeds per square meter. Moderate weed seed banks have between 100 and 1,000 germinable seeds. High weed seed banks have more than 1,000 seeds per square meter. Knowing the weed seed bank level can help you reduce the weed pressure in the field. For fields with high weed seed banks, short-term crops that allow for frequent tillage or mowing would help reduce weed populations. Fields with low weed seed banks can accommodate longer crop rotations and longer season cover crops, and the low seed bank can be maintained through mowing, grazing, and tillage. Knowing a field's weed seed bank can help growers select farming practices that more effectively manage weeds while reducing time and labor.